What's up, guys? My name is Willie G. We got Team Bad Deck here, featuring a new game that we have picked up recently. It is the Force of Will, and he is bringing you guys our very first deck profile of the game Force of Will. So hit us off. Yep. So, uh, Force of Will is slightly more budget than the current TCGs right now until it like, picks up in popularity, I guess. But right now. Really cheap and affordable. If anyone's trying to convert over from Magic to another card game, this is a good in-between point. So for first deck, uh, is going to be Cthulhu deck, the most budget deck that I have. Um, I picked the whole thi the core up for probably seventy-five dollars, not counting the stone deck because that's kind of expensive. But here we go. Here's your ruler, um, the Fiend of the Dark Pyre, as an activate effect, you pay a cost of zero. If you have a Cthulhu on board, you can J-activate him into your boss of the deck, your J-ruler, Narlahotep, the Faceless God. When he enters, he targets one enemy, not, uh, one enemy resonator that's not a Cthulhu, and your opponent just destroys it. They get to pick. So it's it's a it's an it's a pretty good effect, but you know, they could pick something that you don't want them to remove. And then he has a continuous effect. While he is in play, you'll might notice his attack stat is zero, but he gains the combined attack of every other Cthulhu monster on the field. So he swings for the nuts. So he's your ruler. On to the stone deck. This will pretty much give you an idea of the lineup I'm choosing for my creatures and spells. So we have four Magic Stone of Scorched Bales. It's your black-red. You can tap it to produce either red or black mana. And then to round off the black sources, one basic spooky art black stone of magic darkness, and then uh, one special black stone, the... Grusa Ballista, the Ceiling Stone. It has you can tap it for black mana, or you can tap it and a black mana and hit an enemy resonator for two two and deal two damage to them. It's just a special stone. And then on to fire sources. One Myalesta, it's like it's like a the Grusa Ballista stone. Um, produces fire mana. You can tap it and give one of your resonators plus 2-2, two, two, so they can just deal extra damage, get Narlahotep bigger, active abilities, or quick effects, so you can activate it on the fly to like pump up one of your dudes if they swing at it, and then it will survive. And then three basic red stones to round out the red costs. You play a lot more red than black, I would presume. Um, yeah, because I have a lot more cards that have fire cost in this deck, which is weird. Considering it's a primary black deck, but it worked out that way. Yeah, I like I like this ratio for stones. I might change it up some with the fire stones. I'm not sure yet, but it's been working out thus far. You wouldn't play like another color in it or anything. Um, if I sided, because you can side your stone deck too in this game. I would side in the black green ones. And I would side out some of my stuff and side Abdul as my ruler and some of my negation spells just for a more grindy game if I'm against a control deck and I don't want to be controlled so I can control them first. 15-15. Because this, this, this deck, Cthulhu is straight aggro. All it does is put monsters on board and punch people. On to my summon spell lineup. For, for my one drops... For my fire one drop, Black Goat, he's really good. Your basic 2-2 two -two early game drop. Uh, he has an effect. When he is in your graveyard, you can tap a fire mana, uh, banish him from your graveyard, and burn 200 damage to a target player or resonator. So he can help you push for game if you have three in your graveyard. It's cowboy for game. He can kill off other 2-2s two with his effect or weaken stronger monsters for you to punch into. For my next one-drop creature, playing for Shintak, another basic one-drop 
early guy. Just easy to swarm the field with these things. Shintak has an effect. When he's sent to the graveyard, you can discard a card and add him from the graveyard back to your hand. So he fills your graveyard for uh, one of your spells I'll get to later on to set up plays and offers field swarming, which is good because there's an ability, which I'll get to later, that really helps this deck power out its bosses. On to the two drops. Four, uh, three, 40 Thieves, he's, uh, if anyone's ever played Dark Worlds, he's Dark World Dealings, the monster, draw a card, ditch a card, so, he draw, helps. You draw two and ditch two? Uh, draw two and ditch two. Hmm. So, he sets up, uh, graveyard plays, helps you thin the deck, he's pretty good, I like him. And then... Your last two-drop creature is four of this guy right here, the king in yellow. Another 4-4 four, four body. He's pretty good mid-early mid game. What he does is when he's sent from the field to the graveyard for free, you get to add another copy of king in yellow from your deck to your hand. So he deck thins, you gain card advantage. King in yellow is really good. I know most people play, he used to play Hound of Tindalos before, just because, I don't know, it's shiny. And Hound of Tindalos has an extra effect. He does the same thing as King Yellow, except he gains 2-2 two -two for every Hound in your graveyard. It's okay, but in order to activate his uh, deck thinning and card advantage effect, you have to tap Fire Mana. So, I like King better, because it's free cost. I can save my stuff for my kill spells, because sometimes removal is better than... For my four drops, we don't play any three drops because we're men. We just go right to fours. So we play two uh, Shubnigaroths. If anyone is familiar with the Lovecraftian lore, Shubnigaroth is also known as Black Goat, which is why upon its entry effect, you summon a Black Goat from your main deck. Now, this is where we start to get why the smaller guys in greater number are going to come into play. Because your bigger Cthulhu cards have an incarnation effect, which means you can take, instead of paying the will cost up here for your mana, you can sack either two fire and one darkness, two fire, any combination of a fire and either another fire or a fire and two darkness resonators to summon this, you put him in the graveyard and you net this out without having to waste your mana. And she has an active effect. You can tap her to pull a non-spell card Cthulhu from your graveyard. It does not gain its entry effect, but you know, you can pull your big dudes out of the graveyard that you pitch with your 40 thieves. Monster reborn in a sense. It's pretty good. I like it at two. Six six bodies also not bad for a four drop. Getting into our other, this guy, uh, play four, Hoster, the Unspeakable. Hoster's really good. He has an incarnation effect again, like the other one, so you just pitch your goats and your syntax, get him on board really early. It's really good. Unless you're playing against your hair result, it kind of sucks. But, uh, when he enters... You destroy a re uh, your opponent's resonator that does not have an addition equipped to it, an equip, an equip card to raise its stats or whatever, so you can pretty much kill off whatever for free with Hoster. And 7-5 body, he's not bad, he's a pretty good beater. I like Hoster a lot, he's really good. Last 4 drop, we have, we're teching in the one Elder things. Um, he gets... Plus two, plus two for every Cthulhu Resonator in your graveyard. So, late game, if they get rid of your Biakshis or whatever, or you can combo it with Biakshi late game, he just swings in for the nuts, and it's hard to block him, or people don't block him, or they waste their kill spells on that, so you don't have to worry, and your other dudes can just swing in. I like him. I'm trying him out. Pretty good so far. Five, uh, five drops. Just one five drop. We're playing four Biakshi, the winged lady. Biakshi is really good. Like, really good. For a incarnation of two black, you can just drop it. 
out of nowhere. So you can second turn this guy if you got two Shintax on board. Um, it has flying, which means your opponent cannot block its attack unless they also have a flying unit to block with. So Byakushi usually gets hits in. And it has a really good active effect too. You can tap it, and for that, for the rest of the turn, you can target another Cthulhu Resonator. It gets plus nine, plus nine, and flying. So you can give your elder things flying, or your big guy, which we'll get here in a second, Yogg-Sothoth, flying in. He's scary. But Byakushi's really good. And the cool thing is about its active effect is you can activate it during your recovery phase, tap it, give one of your units flying in the plus nine plus nine to power up your Gnarl Hotep and stuff too, and then during your the rest of your recovery phase, you cover the Biakshi and you can do it again and give another unit flying nine nine. So Biakshi's really good. I I like it at four. It hasn't let me down yet. And then last last monster we play, two of your big guy, Yog Sothoth, the Dark Myth. Uh, he has a heavy cost of 8. Usually you get him out with the Incarnation effect, or you call him from the graveyard with your various spells. Uh, you don't ever really use his Enter effect, because you're not, unless you incarnate him, and when he enters, he destroys all other Resonators other than himself. And he swings in with a massive 15... Hundred with piercing, so if they block it, they still take the hit. Yogg-Sothoth is mean. I don't like him at any more than two. It just clogs really bad. His cost is so high. Yeah, but there's cards that help mitigate it. I'm just not playing the one field spell that helps reduce cost. I don't really like it in the deck when it's more focused around other things. Two Yogg is good, though. On to my sp normal spell lineup. Uh, my one drop spell, two thunder, I know what you're thinking, why aren't you playing more thunder, you're bad, but you have so much other removal in the deck, uh, I only ever see a need for two thunder, just to deal that extra 500 damage that, uh, Narlahotep or y'all can't do, run over smaller things to help my dude swing in. One of my favorite, next up, two drop. One of my favorite cards for the deck, Flames of the Outer World. It's pretty much a pseudo-thunder for a cost of two. It d it cannot target the player, but it deals 800 damage, and it cannot be chased. You cannot chain an effect to stop this card to it. So you get your damage in on their guys for free. It's a really good card. I love it. I might play it at more... I would play it at more. i play four of it if I drop the two Thunders, or if they ever decide to have a ban list and do something two Thunder. But right now I like two and two of each. And they're all insta-cast, so you can activate them as long as you have mana on either player's turn, recovery phase, whatever. If you have mana to spend on them, you can kill stuff with it. Other two drop? Stoning to Death. By far the best removal spell in the game. Uh, pay a cost of two black, just kill a guy. Kill one of your opponent's things. Anyone. Doesn't matter. Unless they, you know, stop it with disease or some kind of other spell that cancels. Um, other two drop. We're playing three, Call of Cthulhu. This is a chance standby. So what you can do is pay a cost of two for any chance standby, it doesn't matter how high their cost is, and you set them, and then when you meet the trigger condition, you can activate it at any time. But there was, they made a recent rule addendum, you can also play chance standbys from your hand for the cost uh, that's printed on the card, as long as the trigger condition is met. So, like... If you play one with a higher cost, you can set it and then activate it just for the two cost. But this is a two cost anyway, so you can play it from your hand free too. As long as you have five or more Cthulhu's in the graveyard, it's Monster Reborn for one of your Cthulhu's. They do not get their entry effect, but still, you can get your Yogg on board or your Biakshis or anything you need. It just helps push for game. And then, tech cards, tech spells, I guess I'm playing. Uh, one, Shining Trapahedron. Field spell, 
or edition, field edition. It gives all your Cthulhu plus two plus two, and it has an activate effect. You can pay a black mana and pitch this card to mill the top five cards of your deck. Sets up your graveyard for plays, for your Cthulhu's, or the next tech card, uh, Black Moon. It has a continuous effect. Once per turn, you can, at the beginning of your turn, uh, you can bring a Cthulhu Resonator out from your graveyard, and it gains swiftness for the turn, which means it can attack instantly. In this game, it's like magic. All of your guys have summoning sickness, unless it says they have swiftness. And then uh, it's banished, so it goes... I think it's removed. Yeah, it's removed from the game instead of going back to the graveyard, so... And then when this card is removed, you take a thousand damage. But I usually just use it for end game push because it gives all your guys swiftness. And having Yogg on board with swiftness, swinging in with the Narla Hotep, it's just, it's really good. Um, and that's it for the deck. What else would you change other than the uh, spell lineup that you were talking about? Um, if I did do anything, these two tech spells would probably be taken out. One of them would probably be an additional Thunder, and one of them would probably be an additional Outworld Flame. But, uh, I'm just trying these out right now, and I like them. I honestly do. I might drop Tetrahedron and play a Black Moon at 2, but I just like the mill effect from Tetrahedron so I can use Black Moon in my calls better and set up Shub Nigger off. Um, he, he's your end game. Yeah. Pretty much, I don't want to draw into yogg -Sothoth. I just want it in my graveyard so I can summon it from my graveyard with my spells. Hmm. Very, very good. Well, thank you guys for sticking with us. This is Team Bad Deck signing out. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Otherwise, a D-Dose. Till next time.